All right, so I went and had a little live session with my homies the other day, you know, because I'm extra and I want to put a little bit of a live element to my sets. But because it was just a jam session, we weren't super tight because some of them have only heard some of my songs for the first time that same day. So to help keep the songs consistent, I'm going to make some backing tracks and y'all going to come help me. All right, so there's two main things that you need to make a backing track. One, you need your original instrumental, and two, you need some kind of click sound to keep the time. In my case, this is my instrumental. All I did was take out the guitars, the bass, and the drums. That way it leaves room on stage for the bass, guitar, and drums playing live. Listen, this is what I've got so far. And that is panned over to the right. And then I got a click track playing to the tempo keeping time of the track. And that's gonna be panned to the left. So you should have something like this playing all together. So that leaves room for all of the live instruments to kind of do their thing. If they want to stop and let the song breathe and like kind of do its thing, they, they can. Anyone can do that. And it kind of keeps that original sound in there as well. So if you have some kind of samples, like in this case, I have that, ah, 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 which we're not going to try to produce on stage. It's there and it's ready to go. Keeps the tempo. Not only that, but if you want it to live, you can actually just change the tempo in whatever program that you're running your backing tracks from. Is that easy. And if you want to get really fancy, you can add like three, two, one chorus right before your chorus or three, two, one verse or hey, drums, tone it back a little bit. Hey, drums, get a little bit more live and bouncy or bass solo coming up in three, two, one. You can add things like that and pan it to the left. So when your musicians are referencing the track through their in-ears, they can hear when their parts are coming up or when you want things to slow down or or tone down or the dynamics to come up or down, they can do that because it's a little bit more professional and they're cued to do it. I don't know if I'm making any sense. Anyways, that's pretty much it.